Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to one more game from day one of Steinitz Memorial. This is tournament played online and organized by chess24.com platform and FIDE. And this is Blitz tournament, so the players have only three minutes on the clock and two seconds incrementation per move. Uh, and we have two sections, two tournaments for women and for men. Uh, both tournaments um, get uh, 10 strong players. So uh, in the men's section we have Magnus Carlsen. I would like to show you one more game of Magnus Carlsen from day one uh, and at the end I'm gonna show you the the standings after day one because uh, you will see all the names and also uh, what's happening after day one uh, but for now uh, let's introduce Magnus Carlsen maybe he doesn't need introduction but he is the world champion triple world champion he's uh, ranking blitz ranking 2887 he's 29 years old Norwegian grandmaster and he's gonna play as black and his opponent Anton Korobo from Ukraine. He is very strong grandmaster who is known of playing um, very aggressive chess. So uh, it's very important to choose, you know, a proper opening against him, as he doesn't scare to play, you know, uh, aggressive chess against anybody. Uh, and uh, Anton Korobov also has a very fancy hairstyle and sometimes it's not easy, you know, uh, to choose the picture, especially for the video presentation. Um, but here we go, Anton Korobov, he's ranking 2667. Um, this is his blitz ranking. He's much better in rapid chess, where his ranking is nearly 2800. So uh, he's much stronger. He's 34 years old and he's gonna play as white. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Korobov opens with d4, we have knight on f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5. So uh, queen's gambit declined on the board, knight on c3, bishop e7 and now bishop f4. So uh, we have Harvitz attack of queen's gambit declined, uh, we have castle and now e3. b6 by Magnus Carlsen, c takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and now the bishop is under attack, something should be done about that uh, so Korobov takes the knight uh, and now we have queen on d5 uh, a3 uh, preventing any moves like for example bishop on b5 which could be very unpleasant as the bishop is already on f4 and it's locked because we have the pawn e on the e3 square so uh, definitely uh, good idea to play a3 and here we have c5 d takes on c5 uh, and here the theory is queen takes on c5 and the game can continue it was played uh, many times so that's the main line however Magnus goes for uh, the queen exchange it's not the best uh, idea for him uh, he gonna give the tempo uh, for white to play with the rook in the center uh, but that's what he played we have bishop on c5 and the pawn structures are uh, symmetrical we have two open c and d files um, and it looks like it's gonna be pretty boring uh, end game but this is what Magnus Carlsen likes. So he avoided all the complications uh, which could give Korobov, you know, chances to, to win tactically, which would be very dangerous, especially in the Blitz game. We have bishop on d3, so developing the bishop, and Magnus play bishop on b7. So these bishops are very, very nice uh, plays now, and Korobov want to just, you know, uh, harass them a bit. So he play knight on g5 uh, with tempo, because now he attacks uh, h7. So black has to, of course, react. We have h6, and now knight on e4 attacking the bishop. So uh, bishop retreat to e7, and you can remember that the bishop now controls this square so the knight cannot uh, move to these squares so uh, for example for now is d6 but if black decides for example moves like g5 maybe not now then the knight uh, couldn't jump to uh, f6 so um, bishop on e7 very useful move and now we have castle so now uh, g2 is not under attack if the knight is moved uh, we have rook on d8 developing the rook bishop on b1 asking for exchange the rooks and here actually 
it's not easy to find the losing move, but Magnus Carlsen uh, did that. He could play anything, like knight on a6 is good move, knight on c6 is definitely good move, rook on d7 is good move, even exchanging the rooks is okay, maybe not the best, but it's okay. Uh, g5 can be played as well. However, here Magnus Carlsen play knight on d7, and he actually blunders the game. Uh, of course, it's still a lot to play, but feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for white. While I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So, uh, the move, of course, is bishop on c7. Magnus Carlsen probably missed the bishop uh, on this diagonal and... Remember, this is the blitz, so uh, it's very easy to, to make any mistakes. And players actually play the moves which are, you know, they have experience. So they know in, in each position which moves are okay. And knight on d7 usually is the, is the best move in similar structure. So, for example, knight on f6, uh, knight on c5 could be played later. However, the rook is under attack and Magnus Carlsen has to do something about that. But he can't move the rook. If he moves the rook then uh, he gonna lose the knight so what he play is bishop on d5 now uh, blocking the rook um, from attacking on the on the d file and we have bishop on d8 and rook on d8 uh, and here Korobov of course want to exchange as many pieces as possible as he is the exchange up so that's his plan we have knight on c3 attacking the bishop and Magnus Carlsen uh, is not interested he want to play something totally opposite so he want to keep the his pair of bishop and try to find uh, his chances uh, with the pair of bishop we have bishop on b3 attacking the rook rook on d2 and now knight c5 and here korobov exchanged the rooks of course a very natural move uh, we have bishop on d8 and now bishop a2 uh, harassing this bishop so that's the plan for korobov he want to exchange this bishop uh, bishop on c2 magnus carlsen uh, is not happy about that so he ran with his bishop we have rook on c1 uh, still harassing the bishop bishop g6 and now bishop b1 still asking hey i want to exchange that bishops uh, but this bishop is a very stubborn bishop and still run from his destiny bishop h5 uh, so here korobo found another plan uh, let's exchange the knight so knight on e4 and now the knight can't really be moved because the rook could go to c8 and that would be very very unpleasant losing the the minor piece so Magnus go for bishop on uh, e7 uh, and now knight on c5 uh, and here if bishop c5 that could be very unpleasant with the rook on the 7 rank so uh, not really recommended so Magnus takes uh, with the pawn on c5 uh, we have b4 uh, c takes on b4 rook c8 with check uh, and now bishop f8 as the h7 is controlled by the bishop uh, and here a takes on b4 uh, we have g5 so trying to uh, unpin the bishop and release the the king and the bishop uh, we have bishop on d3 and now king on g7 b5 so now the pawn uh, is defended by the bishop uh, and here bishop on d6 uh, we have f3 trying to uh, make some net to catch this bishop uh, but now magnus carlsen is not happy about that because g4 is coming so he play g4 himself uh, we have f4 uh, and now g3 as he doesn't want uh, Korobov to create this uh, very nice and comfortable uh, structure of pawns so he played g3 by himself h takes on g3 and now bishop g4 uh, it's pretty safe here uh, of course Korobov uh, will try to uh, to exchange that bishop but it's not so easy but let's try so we have king on f2 and now e5 uh, Korobov is not interested in exchanging, so uh, we have rook on c6 attacking the bishop first, bishop on b8, and now f5. Uh, we have h5, and now e4, preparing some moves like bishop on e2, and now the bishop would be catched, finally. 
but this bishop don't want to be catch so we have bishop on d1 now bishop on e2 now attacking the bishop and the pawn we have bishop on a4 so the pawn can't be taken because this pawn is hanging so now we have rook on a6 attacking the bishop bishop on c2 now attacking this pawn so as you see very very naughty bishop now we have king on e3 uh, and now bishop on c7 setting up a little trap so now uh if the rook takes on a7 and remember this is blitz this could be possible then we would have very nice uh, fork here and uh, black could win the game uh, but of course korobov is not interested in falling in the trap like this so he play uh, rook on c6 attacking both bishops magnus Carlsen check on b6 uh, we have king on f3 and now bishop on a4 so again putting the pressure uh, on this pawn uh, we have g4 finally by Korobov he is already bored of that bishop he not gonna you know try to catch that bishop uh, he just want to exchange the pawns and uh, move because he has three pawns uh, he gonna have three pawns against two pawns of Magnus Carlsen so we have h takes on g4 king takes on g4 and now bishop b3 so now the bishop is free can do whatever but uh, it doesn't really uh, matter for white uh, we have king on f3 f6 uh, and now g4 very natural continuation bishop on f7 and now bishop on c4 forcing to exchange the bishop uh, Magnus Carlsen don't agree uh, bishop on e8 but this time this is the the final move because after rook on e6 he resigned the game and he resigned the game uh, because he has to uh, move the bishop somewhere uh, if he move for example here we would have um, rook on e seven if the move is here the same rook on e7 win the bishop uh, and if king on f8 then rook f6 losing this pawns so there is no point of playing this is why in this position magnus carlsen resigned the game uh, and i would like to show you the the final standings after first day so as you see magnus carlsen lost this game but he is leading with four points uh, and three players behind uh, bu xianxi uh, sorry if i pronounce wrong um i don't know chinese much and uh, daniel dubov shahriar mamedyarov three and a half points uh, and then jeffrey xiong peter Svidler still have three points and uh, anton korobov lekwang liem alexander grishuk and david anton uh, not doing well in this tournament but of course uh, not everybody you know can do well in every tournament so uh, that's the final standings and if you like this video press like as always if you don't like for some reason press unlike and if you don't want to miss other games from uh, Steinitz Memorial press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one